welcome to episode 50 of the Youth Squad Legends series with Wrexham! <laughs> hey, we're in a better headspace today. Becca is making some kind of positive progress. There is still a long way to go. She's still in intensive care. It's been well over two weeks now. But I shall take what we have at this moment. It's definitely better than the situation over the weekend, for sure. And that positivity will power me through this episode. All your well wishes have been wonderful. The many people that have been helping me out on the super chats, thank you ever so much. The travel, the train costs in the UK are astronomical and they've been eating into my savings. So you really have made a difference just to slow down that process. Prior to hitting the fan in my life, we did invest 20 million pounds into our youth academy. It was gonna be a very complex system that I can't really plunge time into right now for obvious reasons. So we've simplified what's been done with the 20 million pounds and here's Posh Cutsy to explain it. Hello there, Posh Cutsy here. How are you doing? Ah, it's been a long time since I've spoken. I completely forgot my accent. It's fine. It, it'll come back eventually. So with the 20 million pounds, we heavily invested in youth recruitment. And we've got a whole wave of new Wrexham talent that will be dubbed the class of 2027. So go into your scout reports and salivate. Okay. Toodles! So we got a whole smorgasbord of talent. Let's go to Andreas Pon first. He's picked up Nino Vuk from Slovenia. Left midfielder. Slovenia was a country requested by one of our Patreons. Danny, that's for you, mate. Then Welshman Kieran Bamford with final find Azelbek Shmatov. I don't think we've ever had a person from Kyrgyzstan before, so there's a first. Get them all signed in. 2.4 million, 2.4 2 million, 4 million pounds for the Kyrgyzstan lad. Then he gets to the big boys. Let's have a look at Roly Sep scout report first. Well, we got six players. Bolivian Rodrigo Titarico. Great name, great name, great name. Sent a forward, 5 foot 11, 2.3 million pounds valuation. Malawian Peter Kalua, 15 year old, 6 foot 2 centre back. Cheers, lads. Another incredible name, the Zambian Golden Soko, bring him in. How about Ugandan Rogers Mayanja? No problem, mate. 1.2 million is the lowest valuation so far. And then a couple of Welshmen to end off this scout report. We got Evan Huxley with insane physicals and uh, Brett Kedel, who on the face of it doesn't exactly look as good as Evan Huxley. But we shall see Huxley 4.1 million pounds worth. That is silly, silly, silly. Now I wanted to make sure that we brought in a couple of youth goalkeepers. Lloyd Collo, six foot six Welshman. And Gary Kinsley, also a Welshman, at six foot three. Tony Pritchard was not done there, though. Gavin Leesley from the Turk and Caicos Islands only got a £650,000 valuation. Well, we can quickly change his position to rectify that. Another homegrown lad, Nick Scantleberry, central defensive midfielder, 5 foot 11, Peruvian Waldir Carranza, looking beefy, amazing physicals on him. Midfielder Samuel Solis, Mexican, two million pounds worth. And finally, quite a small center back here, 3.5 million pound value on Patrick Mbia, Kamana, another player to help out with the homegrown registration. We can recall all the scouts. I think that'll be it for the scouts now. No more action for these guys. They've done fantastic through the series. So this is what 20 million pounds will get you. An incredibly talented youth academy. Who's going to break through into that first team? We did something very similar last series, I think, and very few even touch the first team, even skim the surface. So uh, even though these guys have got decent overall, they are in for a massive challenge to displace what are really well-known names now in the Wrexham squad. I'm taking a liking to Huxley, man. 91 physicals, and he could have upwards of six play styles. We know that this Patrick and Beer Kamana has got at least four play styles attached. So I think they'll be the first couple that we promote. Because, you know, it's not about overall, man. 
It's about these playstyles and body type. Dead ball whip, pass, block, long throw, Quite honestly, those alongside the fact that he's only 5'11 probably make him a better wing back. How about the centre forward, Evan Huxley then? Power header, tiki taka, technical plus, and the flair. That looks like a very, very decent combination. I see on the main menu we've got a plan complete for Gwyn throwing to move to left back. His overall stays the same at 68. And now it's Alan Richards' turn from left back to left winger. 72 overall. Now on to our first match of the episode against high-flying Sheffield United playing wing play football. Pre-match report have them in a 5-3-2 holding. Four-star quality. They might not have the play styles fixed, but they'll start off firm favourites. It's much nicer playing FIFA when you're not completely depressed. It's a great standing tackle by Keone Sola to start us off with. Cheers, Lestoza, Huxley, getting involved, it's Thomas Midjord, oh! Now that would have been a scintillating start there for the away side. Something's going on with the centre of the pitch. Has the lighting already messed up? That is great work. Nice guarding of the ball there from Gwynfrowin. Brewster will go down the line there to Sariki. Was trying to burn Gwynfrowin, but Keone Sola helping out. Brewster then plays it back to Morley. No one really wants to close it down outside of the foot shot. Just wide. Yoke holds the ball up. Cesarini. <laughs> Williams is down. Williams is down. Getting booked, whoever it is. Austin Trusty. Springing from defence to attack quickly with the rapid transitions. Just making... Sheffield United think a little bit and worry. I see some panicking, I see some wobbling. But it's no surprise to anyone that they look incredibly dangerous when they attack themselves. Brewster. Not oh, Danny Baines gets close. I bet that's called as a penalty. How shocking is that? His first touch on the player is well after he's taken the shot. Like he's not impeded the chance at all. It's poor, poor refereeing, in my opinion. Let's see if Tobias Chana can do more heroics. Brewster from the spot. He'd go the right way, but that's right into the corner. It's a bright start here from Rex, and let's not get downbeat. Cesarini all the way across. Headed down from Midjord. Gwynfrowin really needs to get a hold of Sariki. I am so, so scared of sticking in a standing tackle, because everything seems like a penalty at the moment. Gwynfrowin's getting done. Completely rinsed, me. Off goes mid, you're not off. Oh, well, no one will stop him, but he might stop himself with a bad touch. Tomoharu Ioka to deliver this. We haven't got Sorin Dari on the field. So who's going to win the head? I mean, Williams was there. Go on, Cesarini. Oh, no Grim throwing. Help. Well done. Stand your ground, Keone Sola. Onwards. We're using Huxley. He's got a decent passing range. This is Tom Horioka, can't find Cesarini. The play is there, guys. Yes, there'll be an interception by Danny Binns. Midjord, causing a lot of trouble on the wing. Not really a surprise with a quick step plus. Half time, and I would like to say that we've been the better side, no matter what the scoreline suggests. Midjord strikes me as the type of player that would thrive in a three-man attack off one of the wings. Oh, it's brilliant. Keone Sola, take a bow. Tariki's been pulled off the field, which might give us a bit of a break in defense. Get on him, please. Well done, Keone. Back to your keeper. Man of the match performance so far from the center back. Williams hasn't really been in the action. Mizijan for Bin sounds smart. Samasonian for Huxley. Bring on Con Hunter. Move Cesarini to the left. Tristan Hicks also getting a few minutes under his belt. Last play before everything changes. This is Midjord playing it into Van Dintren. Tom Horioka with the opening. He's deadly. He's too deadly to leave him with that space. One, one. Got Lestoza there at the front post. The ball is near the uh, penalty spot and smartly turned away by TT. Collapse the two lines, make it very, very difficult to play through. It's a great tackle, again by Keone Sola, who's been a one-man brick wall back there. 
The Stouzers surely needed help from the referee at some point. Whip pass plus. Oh, it's too close to the goalkeeper. That'll be the end of the game. And I would say that result was justified. A 1-1 draw played out here at Bramall Lane. From Sheffield United to Sheffield Wednesday, they're at the other end of the table, dancing around the idea of relegation. The Owls will line up in a 4-2-3-1 wide. They've lost four of their last five games. Yikes, a little pressing system that hopefully will be busted by the team that we brought out. It's Ambia Kamana's debut, Acton Park. Welcomes Wednesday. It's going to be really strange not playing with Victor Lestoza in the middle of the park. He's been just an ever-present this season, it feels like. Oh, lovely turn. Bench Macca with the roulette. They're sleeping on him. They're not marking him. Oh, Bench Macca! That is brilliant! All right, he's not had the best of form in the championship, but that doesn't mean to say you don't mark up what is Wrexham's most dangerous player? It's got to be Danny Bin's ball. Ah, Gasama. A bit too quick, a bit too shrewd. Danny Bin's struggling to adapt here in the championship, but I'm pretty sure he will get used to it eventually. And be a come on up. He's getting turned at every possible opportunity, even from the Wednesday wing backs. Come on, and be a. There you go. It's a clever slide. And an even smarter pass there to Bench Manka. Oh! It's a difficult angle to apply the finish. Richards moves the ball on to Tom Horioka. It's helped out by his mate, Giacomo Cesarini. This is Sorin Dari. Macca in a good spot again. Scuffs the shot. Similar change to what we saw in the first game. Con Hunter comes in, Cesarini to the left. It's interesting. When we get this ball, Sheffield Wednesday keep on backing off and backing off. Meaning we can try interesting shots like that. Mac has had seven attempts. He's been the main driving force, but also the reason why we're not leading. The reason why we are behind. Come on now. Go on, Sorindari. I mean, why are they not closing that down? Samasoni's oh. going to bring that back in. It's a wonderful pass, actually. Yes, Alan Richards, Dawson flying around his net. Wait for it, because there's going to be a ball to Benzmaker. Come on, Dawson. What is going on? This keeper is on fire. We've got to hit Dari's head. Yes, yes. Keeper's coming for it. God damn it. Wednesday now, trying to kill off the game with the third goal. Sola's gone to ground. That'll be called as a penalty. Even worse, we've got a red card coming here for the big Samoan. Very minimal contact. gasoma has got a chance to complete his hat trick, and I went the right way. We've got to be saving those. 90 passes each. You could say this game has been poor quality. Our pass accuracy has been awful. <coughs> Four minutes of at a time might be a, a bit of a saviour. Go on, Sorindari. Trying to be smart, trying to play it to Samasoni. Couldn't get the pass away. That's full time. It's a pretty horrific loss, to be honest. 3-1 to Sheffield Wednesday. That'll do some real favours to the opposition there in their fight for survival. Oh, yes. That's the one. Welcome to Yuko Ike's Haiku Chronicles with your host, Yuko Ike. Yuko won a rap battle against Eminem. He's the new rap god. That's exactly what we needed to see after such a shocking performance. We got the return of Alexandros Kinalis. In other news, Tommy Jones is livid at the fact that he's not playing and he wants a transfer request. <laughs> We've had a couple of weeks rest. We're 13th place. We're up against 12th place. Stoke City got the exact same points as us at this stage of the season. 15 games played, 20 points each. Battle of mid. They've only won one game in the last five. 5-3-2 five, holding formation. Pressing style again. I haven't been doing the training sessions, which might have been hindering me, to be honest. Can Kinalis, 62 overall, has been out of the game for seven, eight months, bring all the calmness and the quality 
that we saw in League One to the Championship. Him and Victor Lestoza could be a mad pairing in the middle. Right, the game's telling me that he can't start. But you know full well, as soon as the kickoff's underway, I'm making that substitution. Mizijan's in for Solar. Are we going to see something magical? Canalis come back as soon as we whack this ball out of play. Here is Alexandros Canalis, the player that revolutionized the Wrexham central defensive midfield position so much that we had a complete overall in that spot through the summer to try and replicate what he can do for this team. I feel like we've played well enough to ask for some kind of victory. Certainly played worse at times and come away with more wins. Canales with an opening! Oh! The strong Wrexham start continues. Dorian to Ioka with a long shot. This is Ben Smacker, surely flagged. Not offside. Ben Smacker dancing! Oh, it's another brilliant goal! By Magic Maka! That's factually accurate. Is he finally getting to the level required to make stuff happen here in the second tier? Everything so far has been neatly dealt with. And we've still got that pungency ourselves up front. Oh, Bench. Here's Lestoza. Great find! Maka's late run. A little bit too much. Dory with a header towards Van Dinteren, which... Could have been excellent if it found the man. Danny Bin's not getting pulled apart today. Here's Thompson, back heel. I mean, the space there that Berger will deliver delectably. Mmm, fried onions, cheese and the lot. Really good, Danny. Stand up strong, my guy. And play the ball here to Zviro van Dinteren. Seems like Stoke got a two against one. Berger for his second. That's better by Danny Bins. It just helps when there's no flailing legs. Four, yes, two. yes, Danny! Here's Canales. Lovely find. Now then, it's Zviro van Dinsren. Maybe play the ball into Sarindari. Another inside zonal run from Bench Mack. Oh. <laughs> Come on, where's the winner? It's another tackle by Danny Bins. Here's Van Dinteren playing it up to Sorindari. Tomahari Oka's got free, so it's just spreading up that Stoke City defence. There you go. 2-1 to the Welsh side. Tomahari Oka's in the goals this episode. Get some fresh legs in and take the three points. Take the 2-1 victory. Free kicks getting into the box. That'll be TT's. He can run down the time. You love to see it. He's even tried to set off for the center circle. We got a victory, and we got a big smile on the face. Early doors offer here from Bayern Munich for Patrick and Bia Kamana. With him being so new, I'm just trying to like hold out for six million pounds. There's no way they're gonna say yes to it. Oh, they, they have said yes to it. Um, Right then, so they were trying not to budget four million. They pushed it up to 4.5. Wow, that's a big, big jump. Whatever. I mean, he didn't seem like the type of player that would do well at Wrexham anyway, so let's just crack on with it. Oh, the next episode will be good. First match against fourth place Crystal Palace. If you've been closely following this series, you'll know that Palace have got one of our ex-players, right winger Rodrigo Rojas at 74 overall. He failed to impress us here, but Crystal Palace absolutely adore him, so... Let's see if he's gonna tear us apart. This has been Cutsy. Thank you ever so much for watching this episode of Youth Squad Legends. I know that the recent videos have been trimmed down. I can only apologize. I know I don't need to apologize because I'm sure everybody who watches this understands where the priorities are at the moment. Please know that I am trying to fight on both fronts. I am trying to be there, be words of encouragement to my girlfriend as she hopefully recovers and also be back home in Sheffield trying to entertain the masses. It's tough and it's exhausting, but my mind won't rest and I think things won't get back to normal until she's out of intensive care. Hopefully that's sooner rather than later. Yeah, thanks once again to the people who've been sending super chats the people who have been sticking around on Patreon, helping me out. I need stuff like that at the moment. I can't lie, my financial situation is going down the drain very quickly. But it's going down for the right reasons. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.